One of the most important things I could ever teach you in Madden is the importance of pass protection and understanding not only where you're getting blitz from, how to counter the blitzes, but also how to put route strategic route combos on your field uh, that are going to manipulate those coverages and those defenses, as well as different types of pass protection methods that you have at your disposal. And there's some really cool stuff in this video that we're going to be breaking down that not a lot of people know about, and I guarantee you not a lot of people do. Now, if you want to get my full, I'm in the Jets playbook. I'm going to be showing that from, from Moses from Jets, but it cross applies to whatever formation you run. If you want to get my all of my offensive or defensive eBooks that I have, I've got over 15 different ones for Madden 24. We're going to be dropping a ton for Madden 25, as well as NCAA content over on our school.com community platform. If you you want to sign up for that it's the best place to get better at madden and ncaa and it's all for one low price of 10 bucks if you guys want to sign up for that the link's going to be down in the description so one of the biggest tips that i can give you about pass protection in madden we're going to show you how to stop pretty much every meta blitz in madden is lab work this is where lab work comes from and this is where lab work is important because if you there's only so many good blitzes in Madden, there's only so many good blitzes in the game. So if we were to just have a basic conversation here about what are the best blitzes in Madden, you would probably say dollar three, two, and there's a lot of versions of dollar, but in general, DB fire two is one of them. Free safety zone blitz is another one. Spinner is another one. And then maybe the double safety stuff with the DB fire two for the D line spread. Those are kind of the main ways that you would blitz at a dollar. An up-and-coming really good blitz is at a nickel 3 3 cub, and we'll talk about that later on. Nickel over, nickel 3 3 5 ah, nickel 3 3 normal. Those are all very similar to dollar, uh, but in general, they are unique, so we'll cover those. But in general, there's only a couple of what I would consider true blitz concepts that you need to be thinking about. The first one, and we can look at dollar to see this, the first one is edge uh, or slot corner blitzes. Slot corner blitzes have been really good and mad for ever okay so db fire 2 it's always going to be good it's good it's going to be good yesterday today and tomorrow it is a good blitz method for madden just the way the game works okay so that is one method slot corner pressures is one another one is what's considered to be just simple overloads um, or defensive end pressures essentially overloads this would be like what six one is where you're going to put six guys on the offensive line you're going to occupy the the center with your user and you're going to try to scream that way. Okay, that's another one. Um, another variation of pressure that we do see from time to time, be really good at Madden, is what I call crossfire blitzing. Now, this blitz method is very similar to what you're going to see out of nickel three through five odd. The idea that the linebacker is going to cross the face of the defensive tackle and get pretty good pressure. Uh, a blitz method we saw at the beginning of the year that was really good was three three five normal, where we would cons we could stack. Um, the contains, this has been good men for a long time. They actually patched most of these blitzes out of the game this year, but have always been good at Madden and probably will be good in the future. So those are some of the main methods in which we're going to get uh, really good pressure. And then the last one, the one we really haven't even touched on that is really good, uh, is what I call loop blitzing um, or just stunts. And this would be kind of similar to the A-gap blitz, but it's really more of like, this was really good at Madden 22, strong eagle slant, three edge blitz three, where we're going to essentially slant the D-line one way and kind of loop some pressure around, uh, essentially creating another stunt method. So we have contain stacking, stunts, edge rush, or overloads like nickel double A gap, 6-1. We have 3-5-odd uh, crossfire style blitzing, and then uh, we have slot corner pressure. Those are the main ways that you're going to – uh, need to be prepared to deal with your pressures and all of those uh, all those every blitz of Madden pretty much that I'm aware of has a counter pretty much every blitz over the last at least four or five years has had a counter the only year that I can think of where there was truly I think some overpowered blitzes was Madden 20 and there were methods to pick it up a lot of it had to do with the way zones played not so much just the fact that blitz but in general let's go ahead and get into this so let's talk about uh, what you can do now most of you guys are going to be running some type of offense where your protection is very similar to what you can do out of bunch okay uh, what you can do out of bunch what you can do out of doubles what you can do out of doubles halfback week so I'm going to show it out of bunch strong you can do this out of anything my favorite formation in the game is bunch strong okay 
So uh, let's say we're getting blitz. So one of the best blitzes in the game is this free safety zone blitz. I got a full ebook on this on, uh, on the school page. But basically, they're going to send five at you, and it's going to come off the left side. Now, in Madden 24, we know that the best way to blitz is essentially two methods. It's really through the A-gap, and specifically, it's through the left side. Most people are running their defenses with auto flip off because – Pressure from the left side is really the biggest challenge, uh, in my opinion, this year. So, And then they could do some different things. Uh, one of the things they could do would be a method, and they could send a five-man blitz with the A-gap in the slot corner. And you see here, you see how it's kind of coming through that left side consistently, okay? So one of the best methods in Madden 24 – uh, universally to pick up any a gap blitz is to just slide to the right so you see here we just slide to the right and pretty much pick up this this blitz so this is where knowledge gap really is important because if you know how to pick up a blitz you can dot a blitz why well if you look at the coverage here there's only so many coverages they can call and oftentimes it's just going to be this right here a shaded down cover three so if all we have to do is slide our right line to the right we can make two hot routes with conductor we're already in a money play that is going to be able to really manipulate that coverage defense with the double corner concept to the left side. So, again, just something simple like slide right. A lot of pros, what they do is they'll instantly come out, they'll slide right, and then they'll basically set up their route combos because they know that this is the most popular way to pick. The, it's the best method to pick up the blitzes in Madden 24 in general. Let's talk about another blitz concept that we see a lot from Dollar, uh, which is the pinch D-line look. So if they pinch D-line – and they go with this blitz version. Again, we're going to slide right. Now, this one uh, can come in off that slot corner, but what we can do is we can roll away from the pressure. So one of the best methods this year, because uh, of just how good the rollout is, one of the best methods, because, again, if think about it, where's the pressure coming from and what's the vulnerabilities? Well, right here, the vulnerability is we're pinching our defensive line. So we don't have a ton of integrity here to the right side. So what we could do, uh, is we can double team the defensive end on the right side. So again, we'll just set up a basic route combo, and then we're going to double team this guy instead of sliding to the right, instantly roll out, and now we're away from the pressure, and we can make a throw and throw our corner route and be able to manipulate the coverage. This is where what people have started to do is they start to go to DB Fire 2. So uh, DB Fire 2 here is essentially we're just going to slide right, and a lot of times, if you step up, you can kind of pick this up. But as you see, where's the weakness? Where are we susceptible? Where are we in trouble? We're in trouble to that left side. So this is where what I like to do is slide right, and then we're going to ID. We're going to block a running back, and we're going to ID on the left. So we slide right to pick up the A gap. We ID to the left to pick up the slot corner. And as you see, that five-man blitz is, is taken away, and then we can have plenty of time to throw the ball to the wrong team. So, again, this is just all about saying, what are they doing? How can I counter it? What is the methodology? Another really popular blitz this year is out of spinner. And there's a couple different ways to get to it. But essentially, it's a combination of DB fire and the, um, and the safety blitz. So, again, slide right. We're going to ID left. And this will literally pick up every dollar blitz that you're going to face and gives you plenty of time to throw the ball to the wrong team. <laughs> Imagine if we could get an accurate pass. So you see what I'm saying? Just the simplicity of slide right. If you want to block somebody, block the running back and ID that slot corner, and you're going to pick up 99.9% .9 of anything you're going to see from dollar. And uh, now I want to talk a little bit about 6-1 and share with you a hidden concept that a lot of people don't know about. So it's not really necessarily a hidden concept. It's just something that a lot of people don't know about and don't do. So, you know, just kind of bear with me here. But essentially, if they're running 6-1, there are other ways, too. So you don't just have to pick up the blitz. You could also dot the blitz. So if they send five, uh, so the best 6-1 blitz is to send five. And where are we going to send those five from? You might have guessed it. We're going to send this guy. So that means we only have two people over here that can play coverage. So we can do a lot to manipulate this. A very simple method uh, here is to essentially just call Durham. And the reason why Durham works is where are we attacking? We're attacking the left side. So what I like to do, again, we're just going to follow our protection rules. We're just going to slide to the right, snap the ball, 
Here, in this case, we actually pick up the five-man blitz, and we're able just to dot with our tight end, as you can see. Now, the, uh, the best part of 6-1 is that you can actually send six. So we're going to send six with our user down here as well, and we're going to go ahead and pass commit. And what you'll see here is if we send five out against this, the blitz is going to come in. As you see, super fast pressure, really hard to beat. But if they send six, where are the holes in the cover? It's super important to think about. Well, a lot of times what's going to happen is they're going to hard flat, right? They're going to play kind of a cover two, probably on both sides, honestly. They're going to probably just play cover two hard flats. This is very popular. This is why Durham is so good. How, what's the easiest way to manipulate this? Well, we're going to call Durham. We're going to slide right. And what's going to happen here is the user has to choose between the tight end and the running back. So in this case, the user chooses the tight end, so we can just throw the running back out of the backfield. It's just little things like that. Now in Madden 24, another thing that you can do uh, that has been really good this year is you can try to throw an RPO. So an RPO here, as you'll see, oftentimes can manipulate this because they're sending so many people. They're sending six. We can throw an RPO and get some easy yardage. And then the little hidden trick that I didn't get to yet that I do think is really, really, really valuable. If they send five, we want to be able to have good routes out. So we don't want to you know, not have a good play call. But if they send six, we want to have some, some pass pro. So what we're going to do is we're going to slide to the right, but we're going to put the tight end on a block and release drag route. A block and release drag route. And then we can kind of create you know, whatever we want to do as far as routes. So what you'll see is this block and release drag route will kind of change the picture, change the pass protection. And a lot of times we can actually block 6-1. So I'll show it to you one more time here. And again, I don't think you necessarily have to slide for this one. I think you just need to block your block and release your tight end. But if you watch here, and this is even with the six-man blitz, see how he blocks for a second and then he gets in the, into the route. So the cool part is you can kind of build around this. And the delay drag is kind of like an old or a, a new way of, of kind of getting to the delay fade. Because again, if they're sending a heavy blitz, very likely you're going to get something like this, where if you pick up the blitz for just a second, you're going to have a dot. So what we're going to do is in this case, we'll go double corner and here we'll actually delay fade the tight end, you know, and you could just do something like this. But what you see is now we're able to pick up the blitz really well. And then we're able to throw the ball to the wrong team. So you see what I'm saying? How you can pick it up with the delay, the delay drag, the delay fade, and then the, the receiver, let's say they don't blitz six. So let's say they blitz five. So here we're going to blitz five, and I want you to watch what happens with this tight end on the delay drag. And again, you can kind of put whatever route combination you want. But what you'll see is watch this delay drag. He kind of sits for a second, and then eventually he'll go out into the route combination. So if they go user, let's say, and, and again, just kind of in a, a picture here, trying to paint a picture, where's the user going to go? Well, the user is going to have to go to this slot receiver because he doesn't really have anything on the back side of this. Uh, to defend him, right? If you, especially if you're in a coverage shell like like this, for example, uh, very very likely that they could do something like this, or even a deep half variation. Okay, so what's going to happen is we go to this play, and now you see we have plenty of time, and notice the running back gets wide open as well as the tight end could be could be a a potential threat as well. Another reason why I like to slide right and put the tight end on a route, like a delay drag, is because when you slide right, that tight end will kind of just be isolated. And I find that he'll just come out. He'll just he'll just basically enter into the route tree a little bit faster than he would otherwise. So these are just some some basic things and basic tips. So the cool part is you could let's say you know let's say here actually I did not realize that that happened. Um, but another little method that we can do, let's say we're, play, we're playing Sam Blitz Zero or a man-based coverage. So the reason this is helpful for man-based blitzes is because oftentimes, as you'll see right here, take a look at who's manned up on the running back. See how's that safety? If I put the, if I block the running back, notice that this uh, this man-to-man -man player becomes a deep a deep middle third and he takes away the post route. So it kind of hurts my manipulation of the coverage but I need a second to throw the route. So the way that I can do that or accomplish getting that, that split second to throw this route is we're just going to block and release 
the running back. So now the running back is still going to go into his route, but what's going to happen is notice that that safety is no longer a middle third defender, and now I have plenty of space in the deep middle part of the field to be able to manipulate this. So again, if I'm just user in here, right, all I have to do is block this blitz for just a split second. So what we might do is we might block and release drag our tight end, block and release flat our running back, and then we might even just run a basic combination like this. I mean, this is perfectly fine. And what you're going to see is we're going to pick up the blitz for just a split second, and then we're going to throw a touchdown against a cover zero cover. So it's one of the best ways to manipulate cover zero uh, man coverages. We'll show you kind of the same idea out of trips because I get this a lot when I run trips. So again, one of the easy ways, especially these heavy, like, you know, send six man to man uh, type of type of plays. What I like to do is so like you see here, see how we're really isolated, right? So all we need to do is kind of put the user in conflict where he has to take the tight end drag or he has to go to the running back. So what I like to do here is we're going to go to the play verticals. We're going to delay drag our tight end. We're going to wheel our running back and we have that delay drag. So that delay drag oftentimes will block the blitz long enough for us to throw the deep crosser over the middle of the field. So what tends to happen just kind of in, in using this concept is they tend to take their user and they go with the running back. Okay. So if they do go with the running back to the right, what you're going to notice here is this tight end on this little drag. See how he comes underneath? Who's guarding him? That would be the user who has to run with the running back. Otherwise, the running back is going to score a touchdown. So not only are you able to, you know, block, like well, the best way to block 6-1 is to block your tight end. So like if they send six and you block your tight end, nine times out of ten, you're going to actually block the blitz. But one of the secret methods to blocking this blitz is the block and release drag because now he can still be a threat in the route and then you know let's say like in this situation here you know we're running kind of a scissor action and you see there i just got to throw the tight end okay so uh this is one of the best ways to counter six one which is a different type of blitz than um dollar so now I want to get into like, like just like basic pass pro. So, for example, here in this nickel nickel three three blitz, this blitz is is good uh, and was a lot better than the beginning of the year. But basically, the idea here, if you if you take a look at this, this is very similar to the dollar a gap. So what would be a good protection for this? Well, to start, we're just going to apply dollar to this. So we're going to slide right, send five out, and see if we can block it. And we see here. We delayed the pressure, but not the best, so we still get that pressure in. So we're going to kind of take this a step further, and we're going to block our running back, or we could even block and release him. We don't even have to block him. But essentially, let's do this. So now we're going to slide right, block our running back, and we're going to ID that outside guy. And now you see here the blitz is completely picked up, and you're able to run all your plays. So we took what we learned from the blocking the blitz in dollar and we applied it to nickel three, three, because it very much a very similar uh, type of concept. Now I actually don't remember exactly how to run this blitz out of nickel over. So kind of bear with me here, but I'm pretty sure is it shift. It's like a, it's like, I oh, may, may have it wrong here. I think I do have it wrong here. I'm trying to get this D line to crash. I, I might need to just do this. There you go, crash. And then I think it's something like shift. I don't know exactly how to do this, but it's something like this. But anyway, the idea here is this guy's going to come through the A gap. So a lot of times you see, see, perfect. I mean, that's what we get. We get either the DN, the DT, or the or the guy. So again, show blood. Well, this time we'll try to actually set it up. I have not actually ran a lot of nickel normal, but let's just uh, crash left. And then maybe we shift right. Whoops. Let's get this guy back out. So you see how this guy blesses in the A gap, and then you can kind of use it right in here. This is kind of the general idea that I think something like this, okay? Um, but again, you see the idea. He's going to loop into that A gap. It's very similar to what you're going to get out of 3 3 odd. So we're going to show 3 5 odd in a minute, but I want you to watch uh, kind of how we go about picking this up. 
So again, just assuming that you know they're 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 going to run something like this, and it, and it might look, it might honestly look like this. I don't know for sure. Let me try crashing. Actually, it might be this. This might be the move. It's crash right. I think it might be crash right for sure. Because then they move this guy, like they move him, kind of like this is very similar to three three five. It's the same concept. So in general, what's going to happen here? Well, that guy is going to cross that DT, and he's going to enter the A gap. And as you see, oh no, I'm getting blitzed, right? It's the only thing they can do to blitz you, okay? That's part one part. It's really the only thing they can do to blitz you, uh, which I think is is super important. Um, it's the only real method that they have to create pressure. So you see here, see how they can kind of move him back like this. So what would be a good where would be a good first step to like labbing uh, an actual legitimate pass pro? Well, let's just start by sliding sliding to the right. So we slide to the right and we see, oh, didn't quite work out well. I can't really five out this. Okay, I'm not going to five out it because, you know, pretty good alignment, pretty good, pretty good, whatever, right? So now what I'm going to do is I am going to try a different pass pro method. So what I might do now is I might, you know, slide right, ID, and then, you know, kind of do what I was doing on a dollar. We'll see if this works. You see, actually doesn't quite work super well for me. So another pass protection method that I like to tell people, and, and with 335-odd, I think it's a, it's a very important uh, distinction. With 335-odd and with nickel over, they're a little different than dollar just because of the way the formation is laid out. Because it's not necessarily an A-gap blitz. It's really more of a crossfire type of concept, right? So it's a little bit different of a pickup. So uh, another thing we can do here is just block the running back. Just block the running back. And you see, oh, voila, the blitz is completely picked up. So you see what I'm saying? I'll show the same thing out of 3 through 5 odd. But a lot of this is just going through and saying, where are they blitzing me from? What is their threat? And what are some potential pickups that might work? Sometimes it's the simplest thing, such as blocking your tight end and blocking your running back. Sometimes you have to slide an ID and all that. But that comes from you know studying what the best players in the world do. If you can pick up a blitz, you can dot a blitz every single time. We'll show you 3 through 5 odd. Okay, so now we're going to apply the same thing that we just talked out of nickel over and how to pick that blitz up to teaching how to block uh, 335, uh, whoops, 335 odd. Okay, 335 odd to me is like the new meta, not necessarily, but like Henry runs it, so a lot of people like to run it, but it's a, it's the same idea as we have an ebook on this on our site too. So if you want to learn how I run it, uh, that'll be on the, the uh, school.com community page. And I actually grabbed Colts just because you can actually block your tight end in a bunch. So uh, what they're going to do is auto flip is going to be off. They might be in baseline. They might not. It just kind of depends. A lot of people that I've seen are uh, actually not because what they'll do is they'll leave their match on and they're going to do this out of cover three cloud most of the time. So there's two things I want to showcase. The first thing I want to show, if I can find cover three cloud, I don't know where it is. There it is. Uh, they're going to flip it. So the setup is they're going to blitz their linebackers, QB contain, and essentially they're going to move this guy. And you see how I can get him moved a little bit more on this than I can at a nickel over, so it's a little better. And then this guy's going to kind of be right here. But again, this is the idea of crossing that defensive tackle. Now, um, you know, they might spread their line, but in general, this is what you're going to get, right? So... First things first, let me just show slide right. If I slide right, you see I get absolutely destroyed and I get screamed at super, super heavy. So not exactly the best move to, to block this blitz. And a lot of people like to even just bring this guy back to kind of super delay it. And they'll kind of get in this unique kind of soft spot with their user where they're kind of standing right here. But check this out. If I just block my running back, that's all I do. You see it blocks the blitz and we're able to dot. So sometimes it's the simplest things. And you can't just say, oh, well, this worked when I was running dollar, now 335-odd. It's a little bit different. But in general, they can only call dollar or 335-odd. They can't call two defenses at one time. So you're able to, you know, kind of craft things however you want. So, again, uh, let's talk just briefly about dotting the blitz. So if you want to dot the blitz, this is the most common coverage you're going to get. You're going to get one of two things there on the left side. You're either going to get the cloud coverage or you might get a third and a hook curl, hook curl. But in general, this is kind of what you're going to get. So one of the easiest ways to dot this defense up is to utilize a out route and a running back streak. And to just say, okay, I'm just going to dot the blitz because I know they don't have a yellow zone there. 
because that defender is not in a good position to, to be able to do that. Uh, this also is kind of how you can manipulate this on the other side. So the one adjustment they can do is they can bluff blitz this linebacker, which will guard the, uh, the running back really well, right? So what we can do is we can go to the play verticals with a post and run this combo right here. And what you're going to see is now we can just throw that tight end, that tight end, um, that tight end wheel route against this defense, and I'll show that. And then let's say, let me show you real quick. Let's say the user decides, okay, I'm going to go run to the tight end wheel. Well, in this coverage shell, what we're able to do, and what I would actually do if I was going to send five out against this, I would go ahead and slide to the left, just because I think it'll do a little bit of a, it'll it'll delay that blitz. You see how you can kind of step to the right and then throw it. With 3 through 5 odd, as you notice, and 3 through 5 odd and nickel normal are the same in the sense that they're really overloading this left side. So this guy is not pinched. He is, is this is important. He's not pinched. He's kind of coming into that B gap area, which changes the protection. It's really the main method. So because of that, we can't slide right because we're sliding away from all the blitzing. So we slide left and then kind of. Uh, craft our our play and you'll see this slide left a lot of times can just delay it for a second while we can actually make a quick read with a five out another simple thing you can do is just slide left block the running back uh, because again they can't really send pressure off the right side like the pressure off the right side out of this is really not that good so again a lot of this comes back to and this is why film study is important knowing the formation that you are playing what are the strengths and weaknesses of the defense that you are facing. And I understand that the strength of this formation, the strength of the defense is this five man pressure. That is why you run nickel three, three, five odd for this five man blitz right here. So where are the holes in the coverage and how do I dot the blitz? Because if I can dot the blitz, I force them to play coverage. Everything's over. So I know that they play have they have a base cover three cloud over there to that left side with a hard flat. I know what it means on the right side. They're going to play a lot of cover three. So what's really good against this defense? You guessed it. Double corner, slide left block running back. This destroys this, especially if we can run our bunch to the right. Why? Well, because as you can see here, and I did not mean to do that. I did not mean to roll out. I kind of triggered all the crazy sheds. But what you'll see, and I'll show it a little bit better here. So again, they send the five-man blitz. You don't even have to slide. You just block your running back. But they send the five-man blitz. We run double corner, okay? This is really simple because we're able to block the blitz. So we're able to have plenty of time, and they're not going to shed very well. Why? Because they have contains. That, that corner route to the right is going to be wide open. So now you might be asking, okay, well, what are some things they can do to stop that? Well, the only thing they can really do is they go user it. But if they go user it, which I'll show right here, if they do go user it, because they're running that cloud coverage on the solo wide receiver side, this is going to be wide open once he kind of cuts into the middle of the field, as you see, and then he can juke and get some big yardage. So I just really want to emphasize, guys, it's so important to understand I'm playing 3 3 5 odd. What are the strengths and weaknesses of the defense? And really important question is how can they blitz me and what are my pass protections? Because your pass protection might be different for 3-3-5 odd than it is against 6-1. You know, for example, 6-1, one of the best things to do is to put that tight end on delay drag. But you'll see here with 3-3-5 odd, that might not necessarily be the case. And actually here it worked great, right? Sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't. That's why you got to test it out. But this has kind of been just a, a complete, a complete guide, complete little breakdown here in terms of how to handle blitzes in Madden, how to craft pass protection, how to understand what are the strengths and weaknesses of the defense you're playing. I want to do more videos like this. Let me know if you liked it. If you guys want to get access to all of my eBooks, they are linked down in the description. You get everything by being a school.com community member. Link is in the description to sign up. $10 gets you access to all of my Madden and NCAA offensive and defensive eBooks.